Well, T.S. Eliot once said that April is the cruelest month. Uh, I call bullshit on that. It's really February that's the cruelest month. Month of love my ass. Hello, everyone. Britton here, also known as Some Okie Dude, and I'm back today with another What I Read in... Here's the month right here, and this month it is February. And to be honest, uh, it, I'll admit it was not the most productive reading month. I mean, I did get a lot of reading done, but I didn't really finish a lot of stuff. So, you know, this might be a shorter video than usual. It kind of reminds me of February last year, where I also didn't read too much. I mean, February tends to be brutal <laughs> in my in my in my. For some reason, it just it tends to really just suck up a lot of my time, and I didn't really have a lot of time for reading, but I did manage to complete some books. So, yeah, I guess we should get into it. First book I'm going to talk about today is uh, Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. I read this with my good friend Darko from Kindles and Kicks. Shout out to my boy Darko. He's a cool dude. He actually posted a review of this book. And um, I also posted uh, the conversation I had with him about Kindred. And then his video decides to blow up. I was just, I was, I was a little flabbergasted. I was happy for him, but I was a little salty at the same time. But mostly I was very glad for him. Uh, Darko, shout out to you, bro. Um, but what did I think of Kindred? I thought this book was fantastic. I had to kind of go back and forth on if it was a five-star read or not. And I finally just decided to give it the five-star because this book is not only a great tale of speculative fiction, but I think it is a brilliant work of literature all on its own. And I am kicking myself now because I didn't read Octavia E. Butler earlier. Um, it was just, it, I, I was not, I was kind of sad I didn't read Octavia Butler earlier because she is a great writer. She is great at making you feel what her characters are feeling. Um, this book is just... It was one of those rare books that was exactly what it was meant to be. It's quick, it's to the point, it never wastes any time, there's no fluff, and there's a lot of really great thematic material in this about how easily we acclimate to horrible things, and also how the scars of the past never really leave us, and you know, I, I tend to be a sucker for those kinds of stories. And it's a time travel story, but don't worry, it doesn't get too into the timey-wimey stuff. It's, it's pretty straightforward for the most part, but I thought this book was excellent. Easily one of the best I've read this year so far. We're already getting to the, uh, to the great books this year, but um, yeah, Kindred was great. Thank you, Darko, for reading this with me. It was kind of an accident that it happened. I, we just happened to be reading it at the same time, and we just decided to do a buddy read. But I highly, highly recommend Kindred. This book was fantastic. I read it for Black History Month, and uh, I am glad I did because this book is great. I, I, may, I may read it again at some point. I don't know when, but uh, we'll see. But Kindred, this book is fantastic. Check it out. Uh, next book I covered and the second book that i read during this month that um oh, let me just scratch my nose here i apologize uh second book here i got was sinlin of sins yes finally i read it uh, i've been meaning to read this book for a few years now i know that alan from alexandria is just in love with this book um it's definitely one that i've been wanting to read for a while and uh what did i think of it i quite liked it i thought it was i thought it was pretty good um, it's a pretty fun take on the Tower of Babel concept. Um, I won't pretend it's the deepest thing in the world, but I quite like the characters in this story. Um, the world is really well done in this. I really love all the floors of the Tower of Babel that they managed to explore. And luckily, unlike other first books, there feels like there's an actual arc in this book. As we see the titular character, Thomas Sinlin, go through a journey from going from this nebbish, awkward nerd into a much more assertive and adventurous fellow because he has to go search for his wife and God damn it, he will do whatever it takes in order to get his wife back. I had a blast with this book. I mean, it took a minute because, um, you know, again, a lot of stuff got in the way and it was just, it was just a busy month all around. But um, luckily this book, you know, despite the fact that there is a lot of playfulness with the prose, it's not that hard of a read, and luckily I, I got with the characters very quickly. Um, the way that Bancroft uses imagery is really well done in this book. Um, now, I won't pretend that this book um, 
was the greatest thing I've ever read. But I really enjoyed myself while reading this. And uh, also, it's much more unique than a lot of the other fantasy that I've read. Is it Perdido Street Station or The Scar? No, it is not. But I think it's a pretty worthy piece of fantasy literature. And um, I do hope to read the sequel sometime later during the year. I don't know when I'm going to do that, but um, we'll see. But yeah, Sinlin of Sins was great. I really enjoyed it. And um, not really much else for me to say. I thought this book was uh, really, really good. And I suggest that you guys check it out. I don't know if I'm as in love with it as Alan is, but I liked what I did read. And I'm looking forward to reading the sequel, Arm of the Sphinx. So, yeah. Sinlin of Sins. The next thing I read, I actually read the other day, it was actually a short story that a friend of mine recommended to me. It's called The Machine Stops. It is a old, very old piece of science fiction in the H.G. Wells era. This was published in 1909. Um, my friend, also my former English teacher, uh, actually suggested this story to me because he knows I am a big fan of speculative fiction. And I thought it was interesting that he recommended me this story because he's not much of a reader of speculative fiction. He's much more interested in like esoteric, you know, philosophy and um, also, you know, nature. He really likes nature literature. Um, there's other books that he also, you know, classic literature. You know, he's that kind of guy. But um, I really, I thought the machine stops was a solid story. It didn't really blow me away. I saw my friend. Keely on Goodreads gave this a five stars. I have no idea why he did that, but it's kind of interesting seeing the, excuse me, it's kind of interesting seeing science fiction when it was in its infancy, you know, like you, you'll read like a Verne, a Wells, or, you know, this story, The Machine Stops by E.M. Forster is the guy's name. Please ignore the scratching. Um, I thought this story was solid. Um, it didn't really blow me away, but I thought there was some interesting commentary about technology and how it can slowly erode our identity and almost there's this, it's almost a proto take on what Arthur C. Clarke said once about how any sufficiently advanced technology is no different from magic. It's basically that. It's basically about, um how we approach technology, and also how technology can become a form of divinity, um, if we're not careful, of course. But I thought this was a solid story. I might read it again for better, um, for better context, but hopefully that'll work out. I, I don't know, um, what my, um, my friend will say. I'm gonna send him an email about it, because that's kind of how we communicate. But, um, yeah, I thought The Machine Stops was solid, Though I think it's more of an interesting, you know, story in terms of the concepts. I mean, which is kind of a gripe I have with a lot of science fiction. Speaking of that, uh, yes, State of Science Fiction will be continuing. I actually am, well, I'm recording this on Wednesday, so I'm uploading uh, the second episode I did with Raph right now. Um, because my computer just became slow for some reason, even though it was putting out videos pretty quickly for a while. But, uh, yes, the state of science fiction will continue. I don't know who the next guest will be, but um, I am really hoping that Whitney from uh, Secret Sauce of Storycraft will be my next guest. Um, but we'll see about that. But going back to The Machine Stops, I feel like I would recommend the story for anyone who is interested in the history of science fiction and would like to see kind of how the genre has grown over the years and to see if... Um, if um, just wonder how much they got right, and it's kind of interesting because there's um there's kind of the um kind of like how we are talking on Streamyard or Zoom or any of those um any of those uh, things. I, I can't I can't think of what they're called apps. I guess I don't know, but um yeah, he really called that, didn't he? But yeah, I thought the machine stops was solid. Um, not really much else to say on that. So, what else did I do during this month? Oh, hello, kitty. So, what else did I do during this month? Well, I watched a couple of TV shows, because I, um, I was on an assignment for my work, and um, I decided to catch some shows that I had been missing out on. First show that I watched for my work was uh, True Detective Season 4. Yes, I know, uh, that's kind of been making the rounds lately. 
and uh, what did I think of True Detective Season 4? To be honest with you guys, I didn't think it was that great. I could only stomach about two episodes before I finally just said, enough's enough, and I put it down. Now, it wasn't a dumpster fire, per se, but it just wasn't appealing to me. I didn't think the characters were that interesting. Um, I mean, it's well shot, so I'll give it that. And also, I know a lot of people were hating on the opening theme, which is Billie Eilish's... Um, God, I can't think of the song at the moment. But that song, I felt, was rather fitting for the cold, desolate atmosphere of the show with its rather cold and desolate you know, sound. It, it really feels like you're there in the cold. And there's some cool effects that made me think of John Carpenter's The Thing, which is my favorite horror film of all time. But overall, I thought it wasn't that good. It just wasn't really doing it for me. Um, I mean, I, am I going to make a video about it? Probably not. I, I did a, um, I did do a Twitter thread about uh, True Detective Season 4 the other day. Um, which summed up my views pretty nicely. Um, yeah, it wasn't very good, and I didn't really care for it. I'm sorry, Jodie Foster. She couldn't save it. Um, yeah, it's about it. And they gave her season five, the lady who did, uh, True Detective season four, so. I don't know. Uh, other season of television, I watched Rick and Morty season six, finally, and I, uh, I quite liked it a lot. I was glad to see that they're finally starting to take the steps that I've been wanting them to make since, like, season two. That, yes, we're finally getting into the more story-oriented territory. We're finally seeing some payoff for the stuff that they've been teasing us for the past five seasons. I'm just so glad. And I've only watched a part of season seven. And again, they finally give us the payoff for a lot of the stuff that we have been waiting for. Thank God. I have been wanting Rick and Morty writers to do this for a while. That was my big frustration with the show. They would tease us with more depth, and then they would take it away and act like nothing was going on. It was really frustrating. But I am glad that Rick and Morty's writers got their heads out of their asses and made it work. Also, I know that Justin Roiland got in trouble for doing things. I won't talk about here. Um, but the new voice actors they got for Rick and Morty are really good. They, I, you know, I, I could only tell a difference when it was in the really intense sequences. But aside from that, I thought the voices were. It, it didn't feel different from Royland, even though I felt that Royland was a big part of the show, and I was worried with how they were going to move forward. But luckily, they have found some people who sound a lot like, um, who sound a lot like him, and they do really well. Um, so I don't have too, too many issues, but again, I am just so glad that they have finally gotten their heads out of their asses, and they're finally starting to move forward with, you know, the, with what they were wanting to do. I'm, I'm glad that they've managed to finally get into that thematic, story-driven material that I've been waiting for, because my god, that was frustrating me to all hell. And don't get me wrong, I like Rick and Morty. It's a great show, it's creative. It's really well done. I really love the twists, and, I mean, it, the meta humor does become a bit much, but then again, I have a really picky relationship with meta humor. But I really think that they're headed in the right direction. I just need to finish Season 7 off, and, yeah, it should be good. I'm enjoying myself a lot. It's a really, I mean, you know, it's one of the best shows running right now, and, um, yeah, I think it's really good. It's, <laughs> to quote BoJack Horseman, it's kind of like Becker, except they're finally giving us payoff. It's ridiculous. I also saw a film. I saw Bob Marley, One Love. Uh, what did I think? Um, I am a fan of Bob Marley's music, believe it or not. Um, the compilation album Legend is one of, in my opinion, one of the greatest compilation albums of all time. And... Um, yeah, I like his music. I do think that some of the nuances of his words have been lost through time because a lot of people just tend to think of him as the kind of stoner hippie guy, which, to be fair, he was that in a lot of ways. But I felt that this movie was... It was okay. It really... There were some moments in it that I kind of nitpicked because I knew a little bit about Bob Marley's life. There were some things I did not know, and I learned from watching that movie. But... um. There were just, uh, there were some things that I didn't really like, and also it kind of went down the stereotypical biopic, 
um, direction, you know. Um, but I'm glad that they didn't try to whitewash a lot of his issues, I guess is what you would say. Because, you know, he wasn't, he, wasn't a, he wasn't perfect by any means. Um, and the guy who played Bob Marley was really good. Also, sometimes it was kind of hard to hear what they were saying because they really speak in a lot of slang. Uh, my dad and I had to kind of listen closely to make sure that we were um, hearing what they were saying. But, you know, it wasn't too bad. It, that wasn't hardly a film. That wasn't hardly a, a breaking moment of the film. But um, solid film. I, I'm not going to give it too much of hassle. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not Ray or Walk the Line or... Good God, what's another great biopic? Well, I'd say The Wolf of Wall Street, but I don't really like that movie. Anyway, aside from that, I think that is all that I, I read and watched during the month of February. And I am hoping that March goes swimmingly. I am turning 23 this upcoming month. My God, it's... Oh, I, don't, I won't waste your time with that. But yes, my birthday is March 9th, which is uh, two weeks from now. I'm looking forward to that. And um, I'm hoping to do some stuff. I don't really do TBRs, but one of the things I am doing is I'm going to be uh, talking with my friend John from Talking Story, one of my favorite people on BookTube. And uh, we are going to be doing What Moves the Dead and What Feasts at Night from T. Kingfisher. This is my first book from T. Kingfisher. I am looking forward to it. Um, and there's also some other things in the works that I'm hoping to get going. But uh, yeah, March should be an eventful month. And uh, yeah, it's not really all I have to say. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Check me out on Twitter. Also on Goodreads and Letterboxd where I write reviews that are probably more coherent than the one you just heard right now. You can also find me on Discord if you want to hang out with me, if you want to talk with me. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. I mean, click the like button, subscribe. Because as my buddy John likes to say, it feels good. Please, feel free. Ow, kitty, stop but Ow, kitty. Anyway. Until next time.